Right, on to part two. We'll start with Cyclonic Rift. Everybody's most hated card to see somebody else play. But I have a foil one, and I want to play it. This is how I play Nedric. Turn a witness. Turn a card from my graveyard to my hand. Part of the resilience of the deck. Now here's some creatures that you probably never see played, ever. Sea Sprite. One with protection from red and flying. Somebody has a big nasty dragon, I can block it. Somebody has some big nasty dragons and I want to kill them, I can get past them. Unless of course they're uh, monocolor dragons and they're not red. In which case I need to rethink my strategy. Forest. Looter Ilkor. So shadow essentially means unblockable because as with horsemanship almost nobody plays with shadow creatures. Comes into play, I mean hits my opponent. And I get to loot. Pretty nice if I had Genesis in my hand. Another way of tossing him into the graveyard, uh, as with Survival of the Fittest. Or just something that doesn't matter right now. Hopefully I'll draw something that does matter right now. Okay, so here's a new addition to the deck. And actually, um, I've taken out Search for Escanta for this. I, between the takes, looked at the uh, cards remaining. And I had taken it out for her because I wanted something that makes more creatures. And I've got ways of untapping the cradle. So Sorcerer's Cant is not as necessary right now. I might uh, change my mind later. So if I have City's Blessing, all my saplings get plus two, plus two. During everybody else's upkeep, I get a one, one creature. And if I have City's Blessing, City's Blessing, I get a three, three creature, which is even better. So ring. Island. Nature's Will. <clears throat> the tap all creatures, your opponents, all lands, tap all lands your opponent control that you deal damage to, eh, is oftentimes it doesn't really matter because if they're not playing a lot of instants, they don't have a lot of instant abilities, uh, don't have a lot of things to do with the mana outside of their turn. Okay, so it's just, yeah, tap your lands. But in tapping my lands, before the uh, post-combat main phase, that's strong. That's good. I like it. Reflecting pool. Forest. Kira, Great Glass Spinner. Yeah, this is kind of a non-bow with some of my cards, like the uh, <laughs> Safekeeper. Um... But if I have this out, and they target one of my creatures, then I can use the Safekeeper's ability with no problems. Uh, it's just the first line of defense to prevent my creatures from being uh, targeted um, with any sort of uh, pinpoint removal, for the most part. Plus, Kira flies for two. Yes, a beta script sprites. I am actually playing a script sprites in a commander deck. I... Don't know <laughs> how many other people would play this card, but it's just something I'll probably never take out of Edric because it's just, to me, it's iconic. Um, reminds me of when I first started playing. Of course, I was playing in revised, not beta, um, which is a difference of only a year, but still. So, one of two beta cards I own. The other one is in my art binder, it's a Bog Wraith. Misty Reinforced. Something I want to do is replace this with um, one of the different arts. As I said in the previous video, I like it when, if I have multiple cards, multiple copies of a card across multiple decks, I like it when they have different arts or treatments. So I either want the full art, Mr. Rainforest from MH2, or I believe there's one from Secret Lair. Perhaps that one? I was thinking of the uh, Zendikar, whatever they're called, lottery card. I forget what they uh, called those. Expeditions, perhaps. But it's kissing 100 euros. So I'll probably just get the full art image 2 if not the old retro frame from MH2. Burgeoning. Right, if I'm drawing a lot of cards, a lot of them are going to be lands, and I want to get them out of my hand. So did you play land? Did you? Did you play land? Okay, I'm playing a land with you. Thank you. 
forest, island, island, counter the spell, one of my favorite uh, arts. Uh, unfortunately for me, I started really looking at um, getting the foil ones well after they had just shot way up. So, I'm not going to have a foil counter spell from Mercadian Masks unless I get really lucky. Capsize, another card people hate to see, typically because it just sits in my hand. Okay, bounce that buyback. Bounce that buyback. Bounce that. I can't buy it back. Goes to the graveyard. But. <laughs> Winter Orb. Um, with the few mana creatures I have, and Earthcraft, Nature's Will, this. They all break the symmetry of the orb. So this is designed obviously with a lot of small creatures as the main part of the deck. Any mid range deck, anything that starts to play bigger creatures, bigger spells, is going to cause me problems. So I need a way to slow them down. Now I don't have to have a way to search for it. Um, I'm relying on the pure card draw of Edric to get that for me. Calling Oracle comes into play, reel the top card of your deck. If it's a land card, put it in play. Otherwise, put the card in your hand. Reclamation Sage comes into play, blow something up. Artifact or enchantment. Here's another one of the unexpected evasion creatures. Non-basic land walk. I don't know of any other card that has non-basic land walk. So she's opportunistic. And typically go after my opponent's smart tuned decks. The ones that don't put so much money in their deck, don't have them so well tuned, typically will not have that many non-basic lands. So she's not attacking them, but my friends that do play decks similar to mine, a lot of non-basic lands, yep, she can come over and poke you. Ghost Quarter. Uh, in this case, I need to get rid of an opposing cradle, hollow, maze of Ith. Yeah, something nasty. Of course, they have a Maze of Ith and I have Kira out. It's not going to matter. <clears throat> right, so here's a card where the number of cards in my hand matter. Or for a sorcery, get a 1-1 one, one Sapperling for each card in my hand. Now, if I have City's Blessing and Tender Shoot Dryad, then I'm getting a 3-3 three, three for every card in my hand, which is huge. With Edric, I've often had anywhere from 6 to 12 cards in my hand when I've cast that. And it gets brutal from there. Drain Hermit. Had it for years. <laughs> it has no other home. Um, and obviously, an Edric, I want as many creatures as possible. So, he's very efficient. 5, I get 5 creatures. Of course, I have to pay the Echo if I want to keep him. But at a minimum, I will get 4 creatures for 5 mana and a body temporarily. Forest. Disallow. I'll, in all of my decks, I try to put in something that stops somebody from exiling my graveyard. Even if abusing my graveyard or using it as a holding tank as an extension of my hand is not really part of the deck, I don't like my graveyard getting exiled. So, all of my decks have some way of stopping that. Forest Walker. 2-2. Two, two. A lot of people play forests. A lot of people make themselves targets. A laurel. No, Oko. Okay. <laughs> I should read the cards. So, Oko, obviously one of the most hated men in magic, or at least he was before he got banned pretty much everywhere. Um, somebody has something nasty. All right, it's a 3-3 elk. I can deal with a 3-3 elk, but I couldn't deal with whatever it was before. What is his ultimate? Exchange control of the target artifact or creature you control, a target creature an opponent controls with power 3 or less. Hmm. Another one of those planeswalkers that the ultimate is so far down from my considerations of why the card is in the deck that I forget it. And I just, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's pretty much too, uh, Turn things into elks. Maybe make a food token once in a while. Oh 
Boral, Palace in the Clouds. Right, so this is a way of getting more cards in my hand to um, enhance the sapling inf uh, infestation. At least that's what I say. In reality, it's just here because I like it. I love the art. I had a gem in one, so decided to put that trick. Essentially, it's just an island. Come on. Glenda Linda Archmage. Another one of my counterspell suite. Of course, I can't counter creatures, but oftentimes I can deal with creatures in other ways. Hinterland Harbor. Gaia's Cradle. Shiny. Anybody thinking you're coming to rob me now, let me tell you, this is not an authentic card. This is a proxy. A very nice, very well done proxy, but a proxy nonetheless. My real cradle is signed. I keep it in my art binder. And it underpins the other decks I have with Guy's Cradle, thereby making it a proxy, not a counterfeit. That Adele Inquisitor, 2 to Island Walker, smashes an opponent successfully. I get to search the library for an artifact and I can cast it that turn. Sometimes I won't even do that. Sometimes I just pick up their deck and just, yeah, okay, I'm pretend to search. I just want to smash into somebody for two and draw a card. Speaking of evasion, about half the creatures I'm going to be typically attacking with have power, toughness, one or less. Or some of the other ones that I don't normally attack with, like Lotus Cobra, I can use uh, with Tetsuko out, they can become more opportunistic. Strike when, uh, when he's out so they can't be blocked, so don't have to worry about them getting killed. Forest. Final card. Right, so that's my take on Edric, Spy Master of Trust. If there's any cards that you wonder, why do you really have that in your deck? Isn't X card more efficient? Wouldn't this card be better? Let me know in the comments. Um, let's start a discussion and, uh, and talk about it. Anyway, have a great week. Cheers.